What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the PS5 career mode, this is episode number 27. And we start today's episode off with a brief look at our budget once more, as you can see 20 million pounds remaining with about a week to go in the summer transfer window. So the business is not done yet, whilst we've had major changes to our team for this our third season at the Kind Prince Foundation Stadium, we are not finished and before deadline day slams shut, expect one or two more signings to come in. But for the first two games of today's episode here, taking on Carlisle United in the EFL Cup second round at home, coming to the game Game. Obviously last season, as we know, reaching the FA Cup final it was a fantastic, fantastic run for us to go all the way, only to lose in heartbreaking fashion to Man City. It was a heartbreaking fashion, comfortably, to Man City 3-0 in the final. I would like another cup run once again this season because it was really, really fun going all the way to the final in the FA Cup last year. But it will have to be the FA Cup, not the EFL Cup to me. The EFL Cup is always going to be a competition where I play, I play the fringe players and the young players, give them some chances to show what they can do, and this season is going to be no, uh, no exception whatsoever. The board simply don't care about it. It never counts towards an expectation and an objective. And obviously with so many games coming in, uh, in top flight football, it's just something which I'm not going to put too much emphasis on. So we were leading this game with two goals to nil, though. Uh, Tarat scored our first goal, which was really nice. See, we're in the armband this game. The Rocket King, Adil Tarat, made it 1-0. Uh, Tomlinson, he didn't play much at all last season. But he scored there to make it 2-0. Allowed out of the Youth Academy, whilst Carlo did grab a consolation goal right towards the end to prevent a debut clean sheet for Ben Foster, the veteran. We still held on to the victory. Spurs through to the third round of the EFL Cup. Once again, though, I'll reiterate, I'm not really that bothered. Whatever happens in this competition, I'm totally fine with the outcome. Uh, still following the game, as you can see, Charlie Kelman, who got an assist in that game for Tomlinson's goal, was approached by Lille for a loan spell. Now, I talked about it at the end of last season. I did plan to loan the American out this year. Obviously, back in season one, he was our top striker scorer, and we really liked him a lot. But he's not got the quality at the moment to play top-tier football in England and be successful. As we know, signing Eddie Nketiah. Last year, Brian Brobby had a really decent goal-to-game ratio in limited minutes. Kelman is third-choice striker. And because we don't play in Europe, he's not going to get much game time whatsoever. I think it's best to loan him out. We agreed a 60-40 wage split with Lille. And it looks like he's on his way to the French club for a season, which I think will do him really, really well. He'll still be playing top-tier football, but it won't be in the country. It'll be in a different environment for him to learn the tricks of the trade elsewhere. And also, he'll get more game time there as opposed to here as well. So that'll be a good loan spell if it goes through. Uh, still for the second game of today's episode, aiming to make it back-to-back -back wins in all competitions to get back to winning ways in the Premier League after our draw against Burnley and defeat against Wolves. Looking for our first win since match day one over Leicester City at home and our first away win of the season and a West London derby against newly promoted Fulham. We faced them last year in the FA Cup quarterfinal. This is our first meeting in the league. Really excited for the derby clash of course and early into the game Charles Ball finds Eddie and Ketu who wasn't going to miss from close range gets his second goal for the club and makes it 1-0 and in the 41st minute he gets his second goal of the game and third of the season since coming in from Arsenal in the summer transfer window. Also, real quick as well, I'm finding it really hard to celebrate with the subs and the manager in this year's FIFA. I don't know why that is. I do, like I used to do, and run towards the touchline where I or the subs would be. But for some reason, the players always seem to stop short of celebrating with me or the subs. Regardless, I'm still applauding anyway on the sidelines. Eddie and Ketty gets his second goal of the game and third the season so far. So we fired a blank against Wolves, missed a sitter against Burnley, but bags of brace here at Craven Cottage put us two goals up, right before the break and in the second half still leading by two goals to nil Fulham looking for a route back into the game we defended really well they had a great chance through Aaron Gordon though the former Toffee but Freddie Woodman on his debut what a fantastic one-on-one -on -one save to smother his body at the feet of Gordon make the stop and eventually we scramble the danger away final score in the West London derby Fulham nil QPR 2 a debut clean sheet for Woodman a brace for Nketiah as well and a really solid victory away against a West London rival you love to see it Fulham them starting the season off, lost every game so far. Going to be tough for them to stay in the Premier League, especially on that sort of, I was going to say, especially on that sort of form. It's impossible to stay in the Premier League on that sort of form. Um, still, regardless, following the games, I shouted in Ketty out. As you can see, Kelman has indeed agreed the one-year loan move to go to Lille. So farewell to Charlie and good luck in France. I think that's a really good move for him as well. I like him a lot. You know, I really do. He's absolutely rapid, as we know. He's got a decent finishing stat too. But the most important thing 
he needs is game time. And at 71 rated and behind Brobby and also the new man in Ketia, who started off well with three goals in four games, he's just not going to get enough game time here to start developing properly. So, yeah, I think loaning him out is a good idea there. And I really hope in future FIFAs you can track the stats of players when they go and play on loan for a club that's in, well, not just a different country, but even just a different league. I really hope you can do that in future FIFAs because it's, it's frustrating knowing that they could be out there. But you've got no idea exactly what's going on. Regardless, we'll just pretend he's off to Lille and he'll be a regular member of that first team squad there. Uh, still, his transfer deadline day would come round. As you can see, again, £20 million remaining in our budget. And I did decide to make a signing on transfer deadline day. And it was a new centre-back as well, Courtney Howes from Aston Villa. I really like Courtney. He's really, really strong. He seems like quite a composed centre-half as well. Very physically imposing at six foot three, And 75 rated, 27 years old. We agreed a £5 million deal with Dean Smith of Aston Villa. Plus, sending them Bogarde as well. Of course, the youngster who put up on a free transfer at the start of last season. Sadly, of course, Torres ACL at the start of the season. Didn't see him again for the rest of the campaign. But we've given him to Villa Park. Uh, given him to Aston Villa so he can play at Villa Park. Whilst House comes here as part of the swap deal. £5 million. Pounds. Courtney is 27 years old. He's got some really good stats. He's really, really, really strong, which I absolutely love. And I really hope he will succeed here as well. Again, 90 strength, 87 jumping, 85 aggression at 6 foot 3. So very physically imposing. That's what we like to see. And, you know, in this team as well, you know, Rob Dickey, of course, had a serious injury last year. They were to come back from it. But again, at 74 rated, not sure how much better he's going to get. Uh, Johan Barbe is 29 years old. He's a really good defender, but at some point he's going to start to show signs of decline. I wanted a good Premier League quality first choice or possible first choice centre back we can have here and I think Courtney could be that guy so Courtney in for five million pounds takes a pay cut to 30 grand a week as well and I think that's a really really great deal there and 27 years old he's in the prime of his career right now so that was it for transfer deadline day uh, very quiet indeed but as you can see in what was a really eventful window for all the teams in the Premier League really I can't believe this we spent 105.7 million on our new signings but we raised 128 million for players that we sold, mostly, of course, coming from Bright and Omar as well. But regardless, we made a net profit in this window of 23 million pounds. That is absolutely fantastic, man. I want to reiterate that too. A net profit of 23 million pounds after all of these deals here. That is absolutely fantastic for a team playing their second season in top tier football, man. We we are doing a great job of keeping hold of good money here at QPR. And just call me Dox and Wenger, man. I've got a tight grip on the finances here at QPR. The board love me. And what's that saying? You know we love it. We say it all the time. <laughs> talk about net spend. Don't first, talk about spend. Talk about net after spend. The he knows what he's talking about. Most sensible fan on Arsenal fan TV ever. Yeah, we spent £105 million in the summer window. But don't talk about spend. Talk about net spend. Honestly, man, to have the profit of £23 million, that is absolutely extraordinary for our second season in top tier football, man. And, you know, we've made this team slightly younger. We've improved it in depth as well. I'm not sure, I'll be honest, if we've signed a good enough replacement for Bright or say Samuel, the captain. He's going to be really hard to replace. But a left back as well, we've got more depth in that position after selling both our left backs and bringing in two more as well. I'm really happy with the business we did in this window. And again, talk about net spend. Don't talk about spend, talk about net spend. So I have a profit of 23 million. I want to reiterate that a profit of 23 million. That's more money than we had all throughout the the start of the, the budget. What? That's more, sorry, let me just say that again, clearly, thank you. That's more money than we had, than we were given at the start of the season. There we go. So yeah, we got more money from player sales, and despite signing all these players, than we were given by the board at the start of the season. That is absolutely phenomenal transfer business. Call me Doxon Wenger or Arson Doxon and... Yeah, and uh, yeah, but regardless, um, yeah, I'm really happy in visiting the summer transfer window, man. Again, once again, the board not giving us much money. We made the best of a bad situation and then some. Our team, I would say, has gotten slightly better. It's gotten slightly younger. There's slightly more depth as well. And we made money in the summer transfer window. That is absolutely fantastic. So you saw the scouting update and the academy update there. I also gave two contracts to Ilias and Luke as well. They both signed new extensions here at the club. I didn't want to see either of them go on free transfers in January. They're still important 
important players in our team. Luke Amos has done really well to grow to 75 rated as well, so they'll be staying. And also, as I run you through the squad, we've got this till January now. No more change until the transfer window opens back in January. As you can see, Charles Bull has potential to be special. Things that you love to see. I mean, we know he had higher potential than the game suggested at the start of his, uh, his pro career, but now he's official. He has potential to be special. And what a start for him once again this year. Three assists in four games. As we look for a new permanent captain, and he's taking it temporarily, who knows? Maybe the ball might be given that responsibility sooner than he anticipated. But that was this episode of the PS5 career mode, guys. So big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, and if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you for the next episode of the PS5 career mode featuring yet another West London derby against Chelsea very soon.